Hi, uh, my name is Jennifer Burris, and I am excited to have the time to today to talk more about the relationship between diet and acne, because truly this is one of my most favorite topics in nutrition to talk about. And today I wanted to focus on something a little bit different. I wanted to talk about some of the challenges of translating the existing nutrition research into clinical practice and also discuss some of the practical applications because this is not necessarily easy or straightforward. Just for fun, really, I wanted to start today with a story that I think we can all relate to on some level, regardless of our current skin health or our previous skin health. I think this just sets the stage for our conversation today. So when I was a teenager, I remember receiving pretty consistent advice on diet and dermatology. Maybe you also remember these recommendations. So number one, avoid chocolate. Number two, avoid foods high in fat. Number three, avoid junk food. And number four, did I mention avoid chocolate? So I heard that quite often. I was told these foods trigger breakouts and make acne worse. And I, I heard this, you know, again, quite consistently. By the time I started my undergraduate education in dietetics and, you know, eventually my dietetic internship and graduate school, the diet acne message that I was hearing was substantially different. And no one really talked about this in school, but somehow I picked up that the diet acne link was a myth and diet had no influence on acne or skin health. So, you know, I'm not sure, but maybe your experiences was similar to mine. I kind of accepted this. I moved on. I focused on different areas in dietetics and you know, I secretly held my breath a little bit when I heard someone discussing how uh, diet was related to skin health. And I did. I heard this all the time. I heard it on the subway. I heard it in the coffee shop. I heard it in you know, a yoga class. And over the last few years, it's just been so interesting to me to look at the evidence and see how it's really been piling up and suggesting that diet might contribute to acne incidence or severity. I think as a dietitian, it's really important to listen to these conversations and to listen to our clients and our students and, you know, just the public, because a lot of people have questions about diet and dermatology. And I'll be the first to admit that answering these questions is challenging, especially given the vast amount and conflicting amount of evidence that exists on the topic. And I have a quick picture here of some acne research that I want to show. And uh, this is really just ex my, my brief, quick search on, uh, on Google, um, replicating a research study that recently came out in 2019. So in this study, the researchers did a Google search for acne, psoriasis, eczema. And if you're looking at the results of just diet and acne, they found over 17 million results. And before this presentation, again, when I picked out some of these pictures, I did a quick look and I also found millions of results. It's a huge amount of information. And really, if, if you have a client that's feeling somewhat desperate because of acne and you know, maybe their self-esteem is suffering, it's completely understandable why they might turn to the internet for advice. And truly, by the time many of these clients are considering alternative treatments for acne, it seems that they've already exhausted numerous avenues of treatment. The difficulty here is that not all the advice is created equal, and there is a lot of conflicting information. Some of these recommendations that I'm showing here are ineffective, and others are potentially harmful. You know, um, and while I haven't listed everything, there, there is advice showing untested dietary supplements or severe restrictive elimination diets. So it's critical that dietitians are well-informed to help provide clarity on some of this information and the existing research, and perhaps when it's appropriate, some evidence-based recommendations. And as we get going here in this conversation, I wanna begin by very quickly reviewing how acne develops. And I really start all my conversations this way because I think it's easier to understand how diet is connected to acne if we first take a moment to review acne pathophysiology. And I promise this is a, a little brief review. So I'm showing another picture here of acne development. And acne is thought to develop because of a combination of factors. The production of too much oil in the skin, clogged skin pores, bacteria in the skin, and inflammation. There's a lot of things that can influence acne pathophysiology. 
you know, hormones, medicine, hair products, makeup, genetics, smoking, the environment. There's quite a list. And of course, diet. You know, what about diet? And maybe how diet or why diet? Well, I mean, we do know that a lot of foods can promote inflammation. So it's possible some pro-inflammatory foods or anti-inflammatory foods could influence acne. We also know that some foods can influence hormones like insulin. And some of these hormones like insulin uh, can make acne worse. And this is through a series of development that eventually influences acne development. So let's, let's move on from here and talk about what we know. There are numerous observational studies and actually two very recent meta-analyses of the observational research that do suggest an association between acne and milk. You know, some of this research also suggests whey protein could contribute to acne. And like milk, there's quite a lot of observational research that suggests a high glycemic index diet is linked to acne. Now, unlike milk, there is actually some randomized trials that suggest a high glycemic index diet is linked to acne. A very well redesigned study that was, that was recent confirmed the relationship between both milk and a high glycemic index diet. I think that this is a really good study and I think that it's a really good place to start discussing some of the challenges of translating this diet acne research into clinical practice. So findings from the Nutrinet Sante study that was published in JANA in uh, 2020 reported on the association between several dietary factors. So they looked at a lot of different things and self-reported acne. They did never having acne, past acne, or current acne. And it was a huge study, nearly 25,000 participants. This Nutrinet Sante study is a prospective observational cohort and it included extensive dietary phenotyping uh, via repeated online questionnaires. And this cohort has been used previously to evaluate dietary associations with other inflammatory skin diseases. So not just acne, but things like psoriasis. Okay, so I made this, uh, I prepared this other slide very quickly so that we could look and review the evidence. So the Nutrinet Sante study. The researchers, you know, in brief found a relationship between current acne and the consumption of foods or beverages high in added sugars so high glycemic index beverages, foods, high glycemic index diet, um, milk, and also what they defined as unhealthy foods. Fast foods and snack foods were linked with past acne, so not current acne. And if we look at this a little bit closer, you know, specifically the high glycemic index diet or foods and then the milk, drinking one glass of sugar sweetened beverage per day increased acne by 18%. And this is the part I think is pretty interesting. The researchers found that the associations were dose dependent. So if you drank five glasses of sugar sweetened beverages, about a liter, this increased acne by 129%. Okay, similar findings were found with milk. So drinking one glass of milk per day increased acne by 12%. The associations were again dose dependent. So drinking five glasses of milk increased current acne by 76%. So now I wanna stop for a second and I wanna look at this study closely and discuss this big question of our talk today. So number one, does diet matter? You know, yes, it does seem to be, there does seem to be a relationship, but now let's talk about how much does it matter or why is it difficult to translate the results from these studies into clinical practice? And while I am bringing this specific study into view and I'm using it as an example, much of what we're talking about today can be applied to the existing research. So first, the effect sizes were generally small. And this brings up the question, is the association between diet and acne meaningful for all of the dietary analyses? Now, this wasn't necessarily true for everything. So remember, if we looked at the um, sugar-sweetened beverages, five glasses increased acne by 129%. But you know, we can't dismiss everything and some of the effect sizes were smaller. There's also a concern for spurious association, just given the large number of dietary factors evaluated. And spurious is a term used to describe a statistical relationship between two variables that at first glance, they, they appear to be casually related, but when you look closer, 
it's possible it's due to coincidence or something else. This particular study was self-diagnosed acne. And again, this is not true for all research, but a number of observational studies do use self-diagnosed acne. And um, another difficult thing with diet acne research. So do you remember when we were looking at acne pathophysiology, we discussed that a lot of things can contribute to acne, right? So there's a lot of potential confounding factors. So there's just questions. What about acne medications? What about changes in acne medications? You know, um, what about age, sex? What about previous uh, acne treatments? What about medical history? You know, does stress make a difference? Does family history make a difference? Smoking, and then again, diet. So this study was great because they were able to, be, you know, consider some of these variables, but there's just so many. If we're looking specifically at milk, Yes, this study showed a relationship. In fact, nearly every study that examines milk and acne does show a relationship. But there's uncertainty if the milk fat percentage, so whole milk versus low fat versus skim, influences the strength of the association. Overall, it does seem that there's a stronger association between skim milk and acne, but this is something that we are still figuring out and we don't really know. If we're looking at a high glycemic index diet, you know, there's still some uncertainty on how we prescribe this to our clients. So, you know, does every food they eat need to be a low glycemic index food? You know, how long do they need to do this? So there's, there's questions. And again, these observational studies don't determine causation. So for the future, we don't necessarily have a firm grasp on these exact mechanisms, the exact doses, the exact duration to follow this diet. We definitely need trials that assess the mechanisms linking diet and acne and the clinical influence of diet on acne to try to translate some of these hypotheses into clinical practice. So we need to know how do these dietary interventions or nutrition education improve acne, treat acne, prevent acne, but also how do they compare to the other treatments? I know I've mentioned some limitations here, but this is not, it's not my intention to be discouraging. Instead, it's meant to challenge researchers and clinicians and dietitians and dermatologists so that we can work together collaboratively and really continue to conduct some quality research. Because evidence does indicate that diet may aggravate or influence acne. So perhaps we need to consider each patient as an individual to determine if medical nutrition therapy is appropriate. Well, as of now, diet may be considered a potential adjunct treatment to modern dermatology to support healing. You know, it may not be the primary treatment or the only treatment, but it is an appropriate and helpful adjunctive treatment. A low glycemic index diet is reasonable to help improve acne. And let's not forget that we're not asking people to do something that's unhealthy. You know, this particular diet is high in fruits and vegetables. It's high in whole grains. It's associated with health benefits. Currently, there's not a lot of evidence to recommend a milk restriction. But again, let's use our judgment here and look and evaluate our patients as individuals because it could benefit some patients. But use caution because a limiting dairy may have other relevant effects like reducing calcium or vitamin D. Adult acne really has a number of consequences. And one of these is psychological harm. And you know it's associated with low self-esteem, poor perception of our, our body, social isolation or depression. As a dietitian, it's important that we try to uplift our patients and improve the relationship with food. Um, and one of the great things is that these diet strategies are healthy options. Diet's complex. Food's not necessarily good and bad. And truly the advice I leave here today is that eating well for skin health is about sustained eating patterns over time, healthy eating patterns over time, not just this donut or glass of milk that you had today. So thank you for listening.